Hi, my name is Megan Kohler. I'm a licensed professional counselor here in the Boise area. I was so excited to talk with you all last week for Cathedral of the Rockies Mental Health Monday. Um, if you haven't watched that video, I recommend you doing so before you watch this one. Um, I talked a bit about symptoms of anxiety and depression and adding some tools to your toolbox. And after hearing that Pastor Dwayne's sermon was going to be revolving around the concepts of fear and worry and stress, I felt like I needed to expand a bit more on those concepts as well from a mental health perspective. Anxiety is really, um, you know, the fear and worry of the unknown. And a lot of people are experiencing anxiety right now. And it's a very common issue that many Americans experience. Um, the fact that we are collectively experiencing this pandemic with so many unknowns and stresses, um, anxiety is something that all of us mental health professionals are seeing within our practice much more. I've had people come and talk to me that they've never experienced anxiety before until now. So I'm hoping that if I can help address anxiety and reframe it in a way that may be helpful for some people, and then um, elaborate a bit more on tools and strategies, I'm hoping that this will be something that you'll be able to really benefit from. But disclaimer, um, these tools and this video are not a good substitution for seeing a mental health care provider. So at the end of this video, I'll make sure that I talk a bit about some um, different places to explore um, mental health uh, professionals and outreach and basically resources that are made available for you. So um, anxiety is um, really revolving around the unknown, the worry, the fear, and it does have a lot to do with kind of our cognitive sense of worry and fear, our thoughts. But what's interesting is that if we just address our thoughts, if we just work on strategies related to thoughts, you will still have anxiety. Anxiety is very um, body focused. It's a, a ton of different sensations and experiences in our body that are uncomfortable. So I'm gonna reframe, anx reframe anxiety a bit and I'm hoping that you'll be able to um, kind of create some tools and strategies around that reframe. So anxiety is the sense of the fight or flight mode that human beings are built in. We have it built in that we need to have. But oftentimes anxiety is, is triggering that fight or flight mode and you'll experience a lot of uncomfortable sensations in your body. A lot of people will experience throat tightness, chest tightness, um, heart beating really fast, really fast breath, you can't catch your breath. Maybe your arms and hands are tingly. We literally have a phrase, my stomach is tight in knots, when, ex when we're trying to explain anxiety. Your stomach is tense and tight. These are sensations that you are experiencing in the body when you have anxiety, and they're uncomfortable. So a different way of looking at anxiety is you're experiencing the sense of feeling unsafe in your body. The sense of safety is gone. And what's interesting is that when you look um, and sit back and kind of analyze your anxiety, there's so much adrenaline that's running through your body. It's like you're running from a bear or being chased by some sort of predator. The, the surge of anxiety or the surge of adrenaline is so intense. So knowing that, let's go ahead and create some tools and strategies that are really addressing anxiety kind of at that body level. So the first tool that I think is super important is to pay attention to the body. Really be present to the body and notice any subtle shifts. So an example is if you have just a couple of check-ins within your body every you know couple of hours and pay attention and notice, you may find that maybe your shoulders are all the way up to your ears, or maybe your jaw is really tight, or maybe your fists are clenched. These are subtle body cues, little kind of ways that your body is communicating with you to tell you that there's kind of a brewing of stress that is going on. And so then you'll know, oh, okay, I'm feeling a little bit tense. I'm noticing some of this body sensation. I need to address it. This is a great way to prevent really big episodes of anxiety if we notice some of these subtle shifts in our body. Um, another example would be 
orienting. So another tool that we can use, another example of a tool is orienting. Let me explain what that is. If we look at anxiety as a general sense of feeling unsafe in the body, then we need to send a signal to the brain and body that they are, that you are safe, that they are safe. And a great way of doing that is orienting. You're going to look around your room, head, neck, eyes are moving around, and pay attention and just notice. And maybe pick three to five things that spark your curiosity, that you like the way they look, you're interested in them, maybe they catch your eye, they're pretty, whatever it may be. But you're actively engaging your head, your neck, your eyes, you're moving around the room. What that does is it's reminding, sending that signal to your nervous system that you do not need to be in fight or flight mode right now, you are safe. It's really interesting, animals do this in the wild all the time. If you notice, animals don't have that sense of fight or flight kick in unless they truly are in danger or are perceived to be in danger. They're constantly moving around and looking and everything's good and then they're fine and they can be calm and relaxed. We learn, can learn a lot from animals and, and engage in that. Orienting can be done outside it doesn't have to be just based on what we're seeing. It could be noticing the wind um, hit your skin. Notice how the grass feels on your palms. Maybe you're listening to the birds or the wind in the trees and be observant of your immediate surroundings. That is also a way to orient and make sure that your outside um, situation is reflective on how you're feeling inside your body. Movement. Movement is fabulous. It is a great way of preventing anxiety as well as helping if you have anxiety currently. Movement can be more physical in nature. It could be a really intense physical workout of some kind or it could be really subtle. Um, movement is something that gets you connected to your body. It expels a lot of that nervous, anxious adrenaline. And overall, it's just a great way to maintain your mind-body health. Movement can be intuitive too. It doesn't have to be you engaging in running or swimming or biking. It could be intuitive in the sense that maybe your arms are really tingly or your shoulders are tense and you're noticing that the anxiety is creeping in. Shake them out. Maybe just move them around. Maybe engage in almost yoga-like poses or movement. Um, you don't have to know what you're doing. They don't have to be an actual yoga pose, but if your body is feels good to stretch or move in that way, then do it. For those that have more physical limitations, movement of both sides of the body, both hemispheres, is really helpful in preventing anxiety and combating anxiety. Knitting is something that can be done. You're using both sides of your brain while you're knitting, and it's really hard to focus on anything else other than that. So it's great to prevent or deal with anxiety. Playing a musical instrument is really helpful when it comes to preventing um, anxiety or dealing with anxiety in the moment. So be creative with your body movement, but know that it's really beneficial. Um, another thing that's really beneficial that I talked a bit about in the first video is being outside. Being outside is very helpful, um, but a great part about being outside is a sense of grounding. A lot of my clients will talk about how anxiety makes them feel really floaty or disconnected. Their head feels like they're just a walking head of swirling anxious thoughts. That tells me that they need to feel more grounded in their surroundings. So being outside, sitting on the ground can be really supportive and really helpful. Being barefoot in the grass, on the gravel, on the pavement, in the dirt can really send a signal to your brain and body that you're feeling grounded. The earth is there, it will hold you up. It can, it can be a really great, simple, free form of self-care. Um, journaling is really helpful. Journaling is more of a cognitive way of navigating anxiety, but journaling can be really helpful if you're just writing down kind of a conscious stream of thought um, of all the things that you're feeling anxious about or worrying about or fearful of. There's benefit to that you're able to put them somewhere, put those thoughts and feelings somewhere, get them out and put them down on paper. Sometimes after the anxiety is over, we might not remember why we were feeling so anxious and we're able to look and examine the journal entry and see if we can maybe create some tools and strategies around what we're feeling anxious about. Maybe um, 
we can have some solutions to that. Maybe we're noticing some themes, some patterns. Some of my clients will bring me their journals and they feel safe enough to address some of the things that they were thinking about when they were in the throes of really kind of heightened anxiety or activation. Um, journaling can be really helpful because of that. Um, the last tool that I want to talk about before I start addressing mindfulness and meditation is sleep. Sleep is very important. If you're anxious, you have a hard time sleeping. And if you don't sleep well, it can heighten your anxiety. So it's this awful cycle that we get into. I think it's important that we do just like what we do with our kids. We have a sleep routine. You need a sleep routine. You need to make sure that your sleep hygiene is really, really healthy and optimal. So creating some type of routine for yourself that promotes calm, that promotes a sense of safety, relaxation, is really helpful. If you're having bad anxiety, your sleep routine may be needing to be a little bit longer, extend it, take a bath before bed, read a book, maybe do some orienting, whatever it may be, make sure that you are um, going to bed relaxed and you'll have a better night's sleep because of it. So mindfulness and meditation, lots of different Eastern cultures have been doing mindfulness and meditation for thousands of years and it's only recently that science is starting to examine it and look at it and see actual physical benefit to it from more Western science perspective. But mindfulness and meditation can also be pretty triggering for individuals who have chronic anxiety. Let me briefly explain. If you are dealing with chronic anxiety or you're really stuck in that fight or flight mode, or are basically operating in a constant state of high alert, you may not realize that you are. If you force yourself to shut down those defenses, um, force yourself to not be in that heightened state of alert, it can cause a lot of panic. So a lot of people feel like meditation requires them to sit, be still, close their eyes, and all of those things can feel really threatening if you are always kind of operating in a state of high alert. And so while that's a great way of doing it, closing your eyes, sitting, maybe um, uh, trying to be present in the moment, there's some other ways that you can also engage in mindfulness and meditative behavior. I think things like gardening, walking, going for a walk without your headphones in, um, yoga, um, different things like taking that hot bath and being very present to how it feels, the sensations, the smells, the sounds. When you're gardening, you're digging in the dirt, you're feeling the dirt in your hands, you're pulling up the weeds and hearing the roots pull from the ground. When you're on your walk, you're noticing your immediate surroundings. When you're in that bath, maybe there's different like oils or scents that you're noticing that you can be present to. These are really helpful and you are actively engaging in some sort of form of mindfulness or meditation. Um, you can incorporate spirituality into this really well as, um, and, and there's a lot of different um, breathing techniques that you can do that are almost prayer-like in nature. I really like this breathing technique that engages the body and then the technique really engages the mind and then you can add elements of spirituality to it. So one is the I am grateful breathing technique. So you breathe in, I am grateful for, and breathe out what you're grateful for. And you keep doing that slowly. It allows you to maintain your presence. You're focusing in on something, so hopefully that'll keep your brain from spinning out into anxious thought. And you can incorporate some spirituality in that. Engaging in prayer, for sure, is meditative in nature and very, very beneficial. Singing is very meditative in nature. You are um, breathing, you are having to pay attention to your voice, the words, the thoughts revolving around the song, whatever it may be. It's really meditative, really mindfulness, uh, mindful in nature as well. Um, I think that if we focus on maintaining and focusing on what is present and then we do it in a way that's absorbing a lot of the senses, sensations around us. What does something smell like? What does something look like? What am I hearing? What am I feeling? 
Um, the likelihood of you spinning out and having some type of panic attack is going to be minimal. Um, and it also will send those signals to our brain and body that we are safe right now in the moment. Um, these are just a few tools, and like I said, this video is not really a substitution for seeing a mental health professional. So how do you go about seeing somebody right now? Most of us are, most of the mental health practitioners here in the state of Idaho and really across the country are seeing clients online. And it's great to reach out to different practitioners and ask them what their office setup is. Are they seeing people online? because you want to feel comfortable and safe in order for the therapy to be effective. I mentioned this in the last video, but psychologytoday.com is a fabulous website to basically shop around for a mental health practitioner. And um, you can narrow your search down based on the type of or the type of counselor or licensed social worker or psychologist that you wanna see, the type of insurance that you have, your issues that you're struggling with, and whether or not they see clients online, if that's something that you want to do. Um, another great resource is um, the National Alliance for Mental Illness, or NAMI. They have really great free resources online, videos, um, different types of book recommendations and materials that you can use. And for those of you who are in recovery or considering to be in some type of recovery, almost all support groups and um, groups like AA, NA um, are, are being um, conducted online for anybody who wants to engage in those um, support groups. You wanna make sure that your health and your safety and your healing is, is something that you're maintaining and um, you're able to, able to do that with online resources for those support groups. Um, my practice, Kohler Counseling, I'm seeing all of my clients online. I'm currently in my lovely office right now, but it's small and a lot of my clients and myself are feeling a little bit unsure right now on whether or not that's the best thing to do, see clients in person. So I'm seeing all of my clients online. I've, I've always seen clients online, so my, my uh, transition to online only has been pretty pretty easy. And so if you would like to seek me out, if you feel like you want to um, ask me any questions or potentially um, see me for counseling, you're welcome to go to my website, KohlerCounseling.com. Um, I am on Facebook and Instagram. I have lots of different materials on there that I try to post on social media that are educational in nature. Um, so you can always go on there just to look and poke around and see what I have posted. And again, if you don't think that I'm a good fit, psychologytoday.com is a fabulous resource. I really just want everybody to understand that anxiety is completely normal right now. And also, it may be something that you're experiencing for the first time. And um, it also could be something that you've always dealt with. And seeing a mental health practitioner um, in, in a time of small amounts of anxiety or really large amounts of anxiety like is beneficial regardless. And you can ask for help, you are not alone. It is, it is perfectly okay to not be okay. And if you're not feeling okay, there are a lot of different things that you can do to make sure that you are. Whether it be some tools and tricks from this video or seeking out the guidance of a mental health practitioner, it's important to prioritize your mind and your body right now to make sure that you are living your best self and being the healthiest that you can be. And I'm so grateful for Cathedral of the Rockies for making it a point to be discussing mental health. I think um, church is a beautiful place to be talking about our fears and our worries and our struggles. And so I'm grateful that they're making this a priority. And um, they just want you to know, Cathedral of the Rockies wants you to know, that it's okay to not be okay and it's important that you reach out for help. Thank you so much.